Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this was a request by Krista Nielsen. And for a one-time donation, if you'd like to request a song, album, or movie for me to review, hit up my Kofi in the link tree below. So let's talk about the Flowbots. Headed by the main MC of the group, Johnny Five, no smart ass, not that one, they were a ragtag group of rebellious musicians who frequently challenged the status quo of society with the lyrics in their music. And today's song, Handlebars, was the big hit for them that encapsulated the spirit of their overall work, with an unconventional experimental blend to their sound that's definitely hip-hop, but with a certain heaviness in the musicality with these low, sweeping cellos and somber trumpets that add a deep, rich, melancholy ska angle to it. Melon ska lead? No, that's dumb. I figured I said that. Now, as much as I can definitely get behind the righteous anger, I do have to be honest and say, as an MC, dude didn't exactly have the smoothest delivery in the hip-hop world. I mean, he can say I'll beat competently enough for the most part, but there's definitely a shaggy quality to his vocals I couldn't help but notice for when we reviewed his 2000 solo LP for the podcast, as well as the 2008 LP today's song is from. Women and children, front line, fall on, tune in, stand and be counted, wounded, stationed in the belly of the vulture, watch your back, there's no civilians, women, children, front line, listen. Like, you hear what I'm talking about, right? Just saying, for a group called the Flowbots, you'd think you'd want to have that aspect of your music on lock, you know what I mean? That said, when it comes to their big smash, the song manages a good marriage of lyrical flow with his message, aided by the fact that his flow feels especially kept in line with a playfully structured lyrical cadence that starts off deceptively simple in its presentation if you haven't heard the song before and don't know where it's ultimately going. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, no handlebars. You first hear the song and think nothing of it, right? Starting off by bragging about something small but impressive that still takes a certain amount of skill and balance to pull off. I mean, I ain't busting my ass to figure out how to do it, so shit's impressive to me. Look at me, look at me, hands in the air like it's good to be alive, and I'm a famous rapper. And as the verse starts, his first words immediately ring like a bratty kid pulling his mom's sleeve for attention and praise for something complicated they did. But then with the next line, he switches that imagery of the hands being in the air while riding the bike in front of his mom to being about the hands held high at his concerts, paralleling in both scenarios that feeling of accomplishment. But I'm a famous rapper, even when the past are all crooked D. However, that following line already sets up an ambivalence towards the desire for that feeling, hinting at the myriad of conditions through one's life journey that can affect and mold the desire for that gratification. He quickly gets back on track though with listing a bunch of different stuff he's done with varying degrees of importance. I can show you how to scratch a record. I can take apart the remote control but I can almost put it back together. And again, up front, the song doesn't directly feel political or anything. It's just this slice of life song about this quirky white dude telling you all the quirky stuff he's done in his life. Me and my friends are platypus. I can tell you about Lee Erickson. I know all the words to De Colores and I'm proud to be an American. However, as the goals get more complex and bigger in scope, the delivery of the lyrics goes from that quirky, fun, sense of pride feel to a more sneering, arrogant, headstrong one. I can make new antibiotics. I can make computers survive aquatic conditions. I know how to run the business, and I can make you want to buy a product. And as the music is building, these accomplishments start to feel a bit morally contentious. I see the strings that control the system. I can do anything with no resistance, because I can lead a nation with a microphone. Because he brings up how he understands the mechanics of the kind of power he wants, and how he has the knowledge and resources to manipulate things in his favor. Which, you know, could be a good thing if you care about materially improving the lives of all people, but as you may know about anyone who seeks absolute power, that, that's not exactly a guarantee. And I can split the atom of a molecule, of a molecule, of a molecule. And right before the solo break, you get one brag that has a super ambiguous feel to it when you take into consideration the way the potential of a discovery like that has been used. On one hand, it's a testament to humanity's inventiveness. The discovery of new energy that can be of benefit to all mankind, to make everyday life more efficient and speeding us along the path to future technologies that make for a better world. On the other hand... Yeah, that, that's kind of usually what it's used for, isn't it? My reach is global, my tower secure, my cause is noble, my power is pure. So when it gets to this line about his cause being noble, it was always deeply affecting to me. Because you didn't think two ways about the same guy who was accomplishing goals earlier in the song, right? Heck, you probably identified with him. But then having that snap moment where you started going down this power-hungry road, and then hearing him being still so sure that he's a good guy, it reminds you how human everyone is, including the people we deem shitty in life. Because it's like, you know, of course you think your cause is noble. No one ever assumes they're the bad guys, or else they wouldn't feel justified in what they were doing in the first place. But when you throw having access to power into the mix, and if no one is above you who'd be capable of making it so you have to grapple with the moral validity of your decisions, who's to say your decisions and actions are any less good than the morally uncomplicated way you deem them to be? So if you're the one on top, you get to set the table of what good is, who's important to health, and who can be considered expendable. Whoa, that line certainly hits a little harder these days, doesn't it? 
Because, man, it sure is disheartening to know that there really are rich people who absolutely have the resources to get people vaccines in other countries, but refuse to do so because they're a selfish asshole who cares more about increasing profit shares for your company than the survival of the human race, Bill Gates. And, oh yeah, I said it. I ain't letting that shit he tried to pull during the pandemic slide. We're in the midst of a goddamn world-ending event, and this motherfucker gonna say, Oh, well, hold on now. We can't just give a patented formula for a vaccine to these brown people. They probably don't have the proper factories for it. So let, let's just let American companies do as much as the rational market demands. And, and when the American companies are done, then the surplus can trickle down to the rest of the... And get the fuck out of here with that shit. Because as it turned out, those brown people do have the proper factories and would know the protocol of how to provide the proper conditions for creating the vaccine if, you know, you just emailed it to them. So please, quit acting like you're not just trying to make another monopoly on a patent just like you once tried to do in computer technology. I mean seriously, can we stop playing around with risking civilizational collapse just so a handful of companies can increase their fucking profit shares? For fuck's sake, it's not the 90s anymore, we see what you're doing in real time, asshole! <clears throat> but uh, on a lighter note, if we can get back to talking about flow for a second. There's actually a part I really like where he does a deceptive rhyming cadence right at the tail end of the last verse. I can make anybody go to prison just because I don't like them And I can do anything with no permission I have it all under my command See, you may have thought the rhyme ended on the phrase just because I don't like them, and the and is just the start of the next phrase. But when you hear the final line, the last word recontextualizes the stressed and as now retroactively part of the rhyme scheme. It's a cool little rhythmic stress that messes with your ear on where exactly the rhyme lands, and serves as a percussive bump that leads into the final hook which contains lyrics that heighten the escalation to a fever pitch, with the full transformation from the playful arrogance at the beginning into full-on ego trip with completely unchecked power by the end. Capping things off with the unfortunate logical conclusion of this path. Right before the coda at the tail of the song. The innocent lyrics now a haunting reminder of the dark outcome that sprung from the fulfilled potential of a person who started their journey off doing something so innocuous. It's a somber tale about our capability as human beings, at once celebrating the ingenuity of mankind while also deconstructing how unfortunately it's the selfish tendencies within us that frequently guide that potential, which often leads to tragic results. On his inspiration for writing the song, the MC Johnny Five said, It's tragic to me that the appetite for military innovation is endless, but when it comes to taking on a project like Ending World Hunger, it's seen as outlandish. It's not treated with the same seriousness. That the human race is filled with so much creativity and bursts of innovation, but all it's often used for is to oppress and destroy people. And for how incredibly succinct he made that point with this song, I gotta give this my Break the Scale 6 out of 5 rating. It, this track is virtually perfect and all that, but you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, all this stuff was like super emotionally draining to think about. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta like zone out and just play some video games for a couple hours and just not think about society for a while. Oh yeah, but don't forget to do all that stuff I'd normally say at the end of the video. The, the likes and the commenting and the subscribe thing where you gotta hit the extra button because YouTube is stupid. So do all the clicking stuff and, uh, you know, honestly, I can't even focus on this shit anymore. I, I gotta go lie down.